Deliver at any time. This man is devastating, to say the least. These punches are not at this particular time. Try to pull a sneaky right hand on Ali. Ali hanging on, getting away with it. Getting away with it. The left hand taken on the side of Ali's cheek. The left hook again on the side of the gloves. Right hand by Foreman was not effective. The right uppercut did bounce the head a little bit. His punches will not hurt Ali. Ali just takes him. Protecting his face at all times does Ali. Foreman throwing more punches now. Maybe this could be the tactic of Ali to let the man punch himself out. 30 seconds left in round eight. Very even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. It's Dave Johar once again for Punch Out Boxing. Please be joined with my crossover co-host from iBoxing Club, Mr. Neutral. And we're here today to talk about the 50th anniversary of what is considered to be one of the most quintessential fights in boxing history. The Rumble in the Jungle. Ali versus Foreman, 1974, Kansasha Zaire. I wasn't fortunate enough to, to be alive when, when the fight was happening. I had to watch it years later. Um, but I have to say, round eight is, for me, probably the best round in, in, in heavyweight boxing and possibly boxing for me as well. Steve, what are your thoughts on, on, on this monumentous anniversary? And, and the fact that people are still talking about this fight 50 years on, people that weren't even alive, you know, people like myself and people younger than me as well. And and what are your thoughts on it? Well, uh, Dev, I was, you know, just a wee boy in 1974, six years of age. Uh, I didn't actually get to see the fight till four years later at the age of 10. And that was the day, as you say, round eight. Uh, the rope the birth of rope was there to be seen uh, in Zaire, now no, known as Congo. And uh, my God, what that was the day I fell in love with, with uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, a year later, uh, he goes on to fight Michael Spinks and, 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 and gutted, you know, heartbroken. Uh, so, as a young boy, he was the very first guy we seen on mainstream TV, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. And uh, yeah, and it's it's one of them occasions, them boxing events, immortalized by Don King in Kinshasa that evening, of thirty of October, nineteen seventy four, um, and it's immortalized in history, and it'll never be forgotten. And I hope we can do it justice today, dear. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, just some facts about the fight for for people that don't know. I'm sure boxing enthusiasts and, 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 and fans worldwide know that the fight was originally scheduled for September of that year. Um, and what's really interesting as well is when we talk about people in late sparring, I mean, George Foreman, the reason it was postponed until October was George Foreman suffered a cut during the last few spars of the event. And, and you know, it just goes to show as well how big this event was because it wasn't a case of, right, we're going to push this on to 1975. Yeah. We waited just a month, it, and that was announced in a press conference. That's that's quite interesting, isn't it? It was a very unique situation. Had it been today, it would have been called off. But for a number of factors, it wasn't. Um, George and, and Ali have both had been out there for uh, quite a while before uh, the September date, in, in fact. So George had to be persuaded to stay another month. Uh, but notwithstanding the fact that he had 11 stitches in his, in his eye, 
uh, from that elbow from his sparring partner uh, and fought Ali five weeks later. So, you, you know, it's testament to the the willpower to make the fight happen and, and, and to want to face Ali, who, of course, uh, you know, both guys for me share the same thing. Two careers, in fact, Ali was disrupted with his, uh, his, his incarceration and Foreman had a 10-year hiatus before coming back uh, in 1987, uh, I believe it was, yes, uh, against Steve Zuski. So this, these guys share that same sort of enigmatic attraction towards each other as mortalised this fight in history never to be forgotten amongst many, many others. But, uh, you know, it was at that time when all the big fights happened overseas, you know, the Threader yeah. in Manila. Uh, you know, um, Ali had fought, uh, where was it? I, um, I can't remember now, but it was outside. He, he'd always fought a worldwide toy. You know, he fought um, uh, the great Henry, what we call him, the British champion at the time. So he'd done Europe, he'd done the world, and, and many of them fights that, that we remember today, but Rumble in the Jungle is the one that made Ali's comeback on that second career. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, he was on uh, a, a 31 winning streak until Frazier, lost to Frazier, went on a 10 streak winning run until uh you know, he fought uh, uh, formal again. So, I, it's one of the fights that you, if you were there, you'll never forget. If you won't and you've seen it, you fell in love with Ali because what he'd done, that strategy that he'd done that night and take us through to death. Yeah, I mean, when we, when we look at formidable monsters, it's people sometimes remember George Foreman now. You know, George Foreman, the you know, the God-fearing George Foreman, the George Foreman that sold the, the grills, the, jo the George Foreman that came back, George Foreman 2.0 when he when he beat Michael Mora, that George Foreman. But it's it's hard to forget, sorry, that George Foreman was a 40-0 knockout machine monster when he came face-to-face -face with Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali, it was a case of, look, you know, everyone's seen the clip. It's It's been going around. It's been doing the rounds today, which is... Ali almost saying to his team, guys, have my back. You know, look, I'm I'm going yeah. against a monster, believe in me, sort of thing. And that 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 clip, it sends goosebumps um up your arms and everything because and on your neck. Because George Foreman was a 40 and 0 wrecking machine when he fought Ali. Under no impression was Muhammad Ali the favourite in this fight. He was, for want of a better word, the underdog, the 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 person who you know, people are writing him off. There was only, I read that Angelo Dundee only predicted a knockout for Muhammad Ali. He said, look, it'll be late. It'll be round 9, 10 or 11. So, you know, Ali's corner was believing in him, but they were they were scared of him as well. But Mr. Neutral, George Foreman was a wrecking machine monster, wasn't he? I mean, prior to this, let's not forget as well, you know, he gave us the that fantastic knockout of Joe Fraser, which, you know... If, if people don't know boxing, down goes Fraser, down goes Fraser. That was George Foreman. Absolutely. Uh, not only George Foreman, he knocked out Ken Norton in two rounds. He, as you say, David, he was an absolute wrecking machine. Uh, nobody had, as you quite rightly said, nobody had 24-year-old uh, George Foreman, undisputed champion, WBA, WBC, and, and lineal, uh, to lose against uh, Ali in Rumble in the Jungle, 32 years of age. Although he come back uh, to a 10, a 10 streak winning run, this was by no means uh, uh, an Ali win before the bell. But as you quite rightly said, Angelo Dundee and Ali had come up with a plan. And that was to, you know, in the heat of Kinshasa, at four o'clock. In the morning, local time, they had a plan to wear out the, the younger, big-punching, absolute animalistic George Foreman. 
to, you know, tire him out and round A, as you fell in love with them, was the pinnacle in this, of that strategy. It was the zenith of what changed history for 32-year-old Muhammad Ali. Uh, and, and we could, you know, one day we must break down the fight in itself when we have time. Yeah. Because it, it is a masterpiece in Zaire at that time, was the, the, the takedown of that 24-year-old 230-pound monster. That was George Holland. So, uh, such such a tremendous legacy that, is, that has been left after this fight. But both fight, you know, because George Foreman then went on the, a five winning run until Jim, the great Jimmy Young, you know, who had beaten Ken Norton uh, and Joe Frazier. He then went on a 23 run streak until Holyfield in 1988 89. So, uh, including the likes of Quasi, Buck Cooper, Jerry Cooney, you know, all these were great boxers of the time. And the legacy that both guys had just left from Rumble in the Jungle is something to behold. And of course, Ali became two time world champion, undisputed. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in regards to the legacy of what's left of this fight, you know, if you if I'm sure people have seen it, but if they haven't, some of the younger viewers, you know, when, when we were kings, a fantastic documentary about not just the fight, but the whole experience. Don King, you know, James Brown doing the concert, this whole build up of events. Yeah, it's it's monumentous. It's it's one of those it, events where you look now and you think, you know, politically it was charged with um, Mambusu and and. And, you know, I read somewhere now and that basically all media uh, were, were, were warned before the fight that if they fabricated, printed, sold, circulated or distributed any of the publicity materials for the fight, they could be imprisoned for up to a, a year, Mr. Newton. Up Newton's. to a year. For a year. Yeah. You know, talk about accreditation. Yeah. 754 press passes were granted for that fight. It's unprecedented unprecedented level of interest worldwide. 50 million viewers worldwide. It still holds the record to this day, the most televised boxing event in history. You know, whether you can't regard it as a terrestrial fight or PPV, 50 million global. It, it, such was that. And, and Don King didn't have the money for the bus beforehand. He had to have it guaranteed by, uh, you know, businessmen around the world, U.S. Uh, the great British actor David Hemmings uh, formed a production company uh, and also donated to the process of this fight. So, you know, it was a vision by Don King to take these guys to Africa. He saw the vision. He saw the interest. There was a very funny story, actually, Dev, of uh, a radio station in Kinshasa who uh, got a, a, a stand-in double of Muhammad Ali to come on, do the voice, and say there was an exhibition fight coming up. And 10,000 people were ringing in, saying, I want to see what, you know, I want to see. And that was the, the precursor to this, the, you know, Don, Don King making this fight. And so... The vision, but there's many, many, many uh, talking points about how this fight was made, who was backing it, uh, the judging, and also the result afterwards. There was issues about the ring, uh, the ropes. Uh, so it's a fantastic story. We haven't got enough time to go through it, but it, it's something that all boxing fans around the world, if, you know, if you're interested about Rumble in the Jungle, just go and research the full story, and of course, watch the, the material that you that you have in front of you there, Dev, because it, it is a, a must see. It is a must see, and to, it, it's it's one of those fights that we're we're still talking about the legacy of this fight fifty years later. You know, I, I, last year myself and and Ra uh, from Hunchout Boxing, we were. Um, 
you know, we were invited to the world premiere of, uh, you know, the Rumble in the Jungle, the theatre production uh, over in uh, Canary Wharf, in, sorry, in, in Canada Water. Um, and it was such an amazing event, you know, trying to recreate that. You know, you had a fake David Frost. That, when I say fake, I mean, you know, someone playing Sir David Frost, you know, um, Muhammad Ali, um, George Foreman, everybody, the who's who, there, there was a few songs on there by James Brown, uh, an impersonator, but it was absolutely amazing. And it's great that this fight is still talked about today, Mr. Neutral, and, and 100%. In the upcoming weeks, we'll do a breakdown of our, you know, our most cherished fighting moments. But for me, round eight, again, I've said it before, but that has to be the most remembered round of boxing for me. I mean, years later, we've had so many great rounds as well in in, in all of boxing. Uh, Maidana Khan, for example, that's just come to my mind now, round number 10. Um You know, Mike Tyson knocking out Burbrick as well in that in the fashion that he did to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the world's youngest undisputed heavyweight champion at 21 years old. But for me, round eight of um, of, of Foreman Ali versus Foreman, Ken Sasha Zaya, that that has to be the the best round of boxing. And you know, um, if you do get chance as well, guys, um, there is a great book here as well. It's a graphic novel, Muhammad Ali Kinshasa. Um, 1974 it's a great graphic novel and if you are interested definitely have a read of this as well but the fact that I'm bringing out paraphernalia media and stuff you know years later you wouldn't get this over any other fight would you Mr Neutral Exactly, exactly. And the story of the fight is 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 the most intriguing thing of all of this. You do have your backstory, you had your build up, you know, your delays. Artists were kept there for James Brown was kept uh, 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 you know, A Star status and for another month as all with the support acts, you know, for the concert that they had uh, there was a company in the fight. But Going back to the fight itself, Ali was saying before the fight that he was going to be dancing around George Foreman. You know, as you quite rightly said, that that great scene where they come out of the dressing room and Ali's turning around and saying, what's the matter with you all? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody think you were fighting? I'm the one fighting here. It, it, all of that added to that tense build-up, the whole story behind it. And that was just the epitome of, of uh, of just how seriously uh, uh, Angelo Dundee took this fight because he, you know, he said there's only one way and that was to wear down George, the younger, bigger guy uh, uh, and to Ali was to take, and Ali took that that, that rope uh style, if you like, from the great Jersey Joe Walcott who, yeah. you, you know, being the older guy that he would fight he would just tuck up on the ropes and let these young guys wail on him, taking most of the punches on the gloves or the elbows, and it worked for him. And Ali actually paid tribute to Jersey Joe Walcott for that, but then obviously it was being named Ropado uh, for the way he he done it. It was, but what he'd done from round one, he said afterwards, you know, many years later, that uh, he had to go to Plan B because. Dancing around George Foreman was it was wearing him out more than <laughs> you know uh, actually fighting. So he, he decided to to adopt the rope of dope and jab off that uh, off the clinch and etc. He softened uh, George up for a few rounds, and then all that time the referee Zach Clayton for you know you know a uh, Kentucky born referee. You know, another thing that George complained about afterwards and his team that, you know, maybe he was too lenient on on Ali. But um, even he said round eight was the pinnacle of his boxing referee uh, career. It was the way that Ali was talking to him all through the, through the fight. I, I, I remember early in round eight that George was just throwing pitter-patter, very tired punches. And then he was clenching an alley and then off a sneaky big uh, big right hand that Ali took and said to him, George, if that's all you got, you in trouble, man. <laughs> and George actually met later, many, many years later, you know, they become good friends, that that was when I knew 
I wasn't going to win that fight uh, yeah. against Ali that night. And then there was subsequently, uh, one minute later, he, he'd been knocked out. Um, so the strategy, the, the, the IQ, the plan, George Foreman said, admitted to himself, he just thought he was going to, this is just another guy he was going to run through. Yeah, and he and he and he and he made that you know he made that fatal well not fatal but he made that mistake. And what's really, um, I mean, I had the privilege of, of speaking to uh, to George Foreman and interviewing him a couple of years ago, and um, and I was thinking in my head, the Foreman that fought Ali, probably the the mindset of you know this killer and everything like that, and to how I want to say placid, but how chilled out and. You know, relaxed he was in his in his uh, how relaxed he is now in his older years. It's it's quite you know the the two different characters, aren't they? You know, the wreck the wreck yeah. he was, and now he's you know chilled out. He can still probably knock people out now. To be fair, a heavyweight or a boxer never loses their power, do they? But it's 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 quite contrasting in in terms of the personalities. Yeah, the the fight was built built up on a bit of heat. You know the. No one Ali set a fight. There was no one better. The trash talk, you know, he was very eloquent in the way he put it. None of this nonsense that you hear today. Uh, but he affected people. He affected, like, Joe Frazier. And that was the way he, he dealt with his, his opponents. He'd get in the head mentally first and then wear them down, talking to them during the fight. He was the master at it. But what George took away from Ali was acceptance. He'd yeah. gone through the grieving stage of losing that fight. He'd gone through the anger, the, the emotional, the heartbreak. You know, straight after the fight, he was so afraid of being unloved that he bestowed half a million dollars on his friends and family, gifts, you know, in desperation that, you know, don't fall out of love with me because Ali beat me. Mm. He then went on to have another career and, and proved that, you know, but he was very, very affected by that, that defeat after uh, Ali. So that, that was probably inspiration as part of his second career. Was that acceptance? Ali was just better on the night than him and had the better game plan and was better prepared than the 24-year-old undisputed champion. And George Bond. And who knows if if there if a rematch would have happened, you, you just don't know the outcome of that rematch. I mean, Ali's lost before and he's avenged the losses, but you know that we, we just don't know. And and it just goes to show that the better man won on the night. Um Steve, thank you so just much. A, just as a we just as a wee topper off that story. Yeah. Um there was there was gonna be a court case of suing done. Uh, on one of the parties. I can't quite pinpoint who at this point off the top of my head, but Ali settled out of court, right, to do for a $10,000 fee to do uh, 175 rounds of shadow boxing so they could make a video of Rocky Marciano versus Ali. Do you remember that one that was released yes. in 1980? Yeah, 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 something who, like that. As in, who would have won? Like, um, generated, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a generated AI sort of uh, fight, um, and somehow that that was you know that was settled out of the court. But that was just an interesting we uh, we top up to that story. No, that's excellent. It was it was great sharing this with you in terms of the fifty year anniversary, and uh, you know when when <laughs> it's going to sound really morbid, but once we're gone. You know, when that day actually comes and it's the hundred year anniversary, people will still be talking about this fight because it's exactly it's one of those fights that's not just transcended boxing, it's transcended all of sport. You know, books have been written about this fight, graphic novels, movies, songs, articles, and it's still going on. Yeah. Um, Mr. Neutral, just give a shout out to to where people can follow you and your iBox iBox in um, family. Of course. Uh, Mr. Neutral, Neutral's Corner Boxing, um, on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I, I do mainly my work for iBoxing Hub, so go to iBoxingHub.com uh, on YouTube. 
uh, where you'll find watch alongs, predictions, seven shows a week. Yeah, we do, you know, some fun, fantastic stuff. And we, we collaborate with Punch Out Boxing whenever we can. So thank you for having me, Dev. It's been a, it's been a very pleasurable experience talking about Rumble in the Jungle 50 years later. No problem. And uh, guys, um, we'll be over at uh, uh, Liam Davis versus Shabazz Masood this week as well. Um, your main man, Ra, is in action again when he when he lands back into the country next week. So Rashid will be back. Um, but yeah, um, guys, I'm, I'm sure you watched it. Make sure you do watch the fight. Um, and yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Take care.